Hey guys, I just found this motor in something and it is fascinating to me because I've never seen anything like it, so I wanted to share it. This is a pancake style motor, real flat. I mean, really low profile. You can look it up, it is a Denso motor made in Japan. But what's fascinating to me is how this thing works, okay? So I'm gonna show you, let me open this thing up. I'm gonna put you down right here somewhere. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, one second. Okay. I'm going to move you right here. Alright, you should be able to see me now. So, real quick, if you open this thing up, which it's not easy to do, especially since I don't put the nut back on. Hold on. I'm just curious why this technology is not used in more places and why we don't see motors like this in other, in other things. This came off a motorcycle fan and therefore it has a little bit of room to be in. It's got to have a very high RPM and believe it or not, the torque from this thing is what, is most, is what fascinates me the most because it, I thought for sure this would be a pancake um, three-phase motor. And when I saw there was two wires, I'm like, well, that makes no sense. I felt like there might have been a controller inside this or something like that. Because I'm like, how did they make a single-phase DC motor in a pancake style like that? I've never seen one like that. So I had to figure it out. So I opened it up, and sure enough, it's nothing like any motor I've ever seen before. Check this out, guys. I mean, if you've seen one of these before and you knew about this, well, then, you know, let me know and where are some other applications where you can find this but so what this has is one big magnet which we will check the poles on this right now so I've got just some regular it's just some little round magnets okay so I'm gonna oh is this on I'm sorry I'm blinding you guys let me take that off anyway so we're gonna go around this bad boy and we're gonna see how many poles it has we got one, two, okay, so it is, I thought it might have been, okay, so what we got is north, we call that north, north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south, so that's four, it's a four pole magnetism on there, so there's Four norths and four souths. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, therefore, there's, yeah. So, interesting. Very interesting. Four, four norths, four south. Um, north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And there's two brushes that are very oddly um, configured on there at a slight angle. One at a little bit more of an angle than the other. Just almost looks completely random. Very nice little flat, low profile brushes. Like they're not even your typical big, big square brush. They're like a real skinny brush. So I, I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. Ever. I mean, this is really neat to me. I, I think this is fascinating. It's got a nice little bearing housing right there. Really low profile motor. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is the coils. So I'm going to pull this out. Come on, baby. So, all that is in there is a little bearing housing. 
And this is where the magic happens. I mean, right here. Look at that thing right there. Isn't that cool? This is all your coils, and they are flat. Look how skinny that is. Super skinny. And I'm looking at this thing, and you can see the way the, the coils are flattened, and they go up and around the other side. But if you look real close, you can see the there's another layer of coils in between. I'm guessing it's like fiberglass sheet or like sheet of something. So basically the coil goes up on this side and then around on that side. But then there's another copper coming out of in between the two. So every other one is on the inside and every other one is on the, the two outside layers. So I'm not really sure how they have this configured. I really don't want to destroy this to find out. But you can see the brushes literally ride right along that center right there. That's where the brushes ride. So the coils are also the commutator, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the comm Yeah, so it's all in one. So you don't have to have the commutator ring and all that. It's literally they are it. So the brushes ride along right here. And this thing has some serious RPM, crazy torque, and the output, the output of it is almost equally as interesting. The output uh, with my regular, you know, battery powered drill, I can get 40 volts out of this thing. 40 volts. Not high amperage, but 40 volts nonetheless. So, and not only that, I was able to run another motor off of it. So I took, I took this right here. Hold on, let me get it. Oh man, I just dropped one motor motor. I took this, sorry I got it all hooked up. I took this and hooked it to this motor and, and took my drill and spun the shaft on this and this thing turns. So I'm gonna show you that right now. I thought that was pretty cool too, the fact that it would run another motor. I don't know what the rating of this motor is. There's nothing that like that. Like every other motor in the dang world has got you know more on it than this. It's, it's, all it says is 12 volt and 1M12 with an arrow point. I, I don't know. I showed you the label a little bit ago. It definitely is a 12 volt motor, but I put 36 volt to it and this thing screams. I mean, it goes. It, it doesn't seem to bother it at all. Like it takes, it took the voltage no problem. Didn't even get hot or nothing. So I don't believe that the rating on this should be only 12 volt. I might be wrong. But this thing is mostly magnet. I mean, it's basically nothing but a big magnet and this. This little disc right here. That I mean, if this is as powerful as it is, with the amount of weight that, that, that how much this thing weighs and how low profile this is, I just don't know why this isn't used in more things. Like, I, I don't understand. Maybe it's not efficient. I don't know. I've got to do more testing on it. And I gotta see the amperage that comes out of this thing, but for a wind generator, even though it's got brushes, I mean this thing spins freely. There's no metal on the um on the well I guess rotor. It is I guess it's a rotor on the disc here. There's no metal, so there's no iron, so there's no resistance like any other DC motor when you spin it, you can feel the change of the poles on your rotor. This one doesn't have that. None at all. And when I spin it with the drill running this motor, it almost is like it doesn't have the feel of every other generator whenever you put put a load on a generator, it makes it harder to turn. I almost feel like this one, it doesn't do that because there's no iron and there's no increase in, mag I, I don't know. This magnetism obviously is not going to change. The magnetism here, it, it, I just don't know. I'm still figuring it out, but this is really cool. I don't know why this isn't more stuff. I don't know why we don't see more of these. I don't know why I haven't heard of these before or, or what. It's almost like it's hidden right underneath our nose. It's kind of like the washing machine motor. The washing machine motor right here. This guy. It, this is a smaller one. I've got the two big 12 inches. This is a smaller one. And, uh, I've actually took a ceiling fan. This is an old ceiling fan thing and I stuck the rotor inside it because it fits absolutely perfect but this is a three-phase brushless sorry I got it all dirty man I gotta clean this up but it's a three-phase brushless DC motor or AC motor whatever you want to call it but it's a three-phase brushless motor and basically when I bought it off eBay it didn't have the shaft or the bearing or anything like that it was just literally the the, the stator and the rotor were just stuck together so 
and you know, I don't know if this would be the stator. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but this is technology which is really neat, and they're, they, I mean, this is a super powerful motor. We're finding out now you can run them off high frequency, high voltage, and, and you get crazy amount of torque out of them, and crazy efficiency, and, and yet this technology is in our washing machines, and, and we don't, I mean, now they're starting to make every scooter, every, every electric boat, bike, scooter, skates, they're all brushless, you know, everything's going brushless, so that's, that's a, a movement coming, like, these are my little electric skates, love these things, you know, but, but they're, they got a brush motor on them, the, the new brushless ones, literally the motor is built into the wheel, underneath your foot, and it's all a hub motor, and it's so cool, I haven't gotten none yet, but I'm working on building a hub motor out of this, another subject though, sorry to get off topic there, and this is my ceiling fan, and this thing's sweet right here, check this guy, you can see how it, it has the lag from the magnets in there, but I took a ceiling fan and I put magnets all around it, and the output on this thing is awesome, Anyway, that's a little wind turbine I'm building. So let's put this together, <clears throat> and let's, I want to show it to you running. It's pretty cool. Maybe you'll like it. Really cool motor. Get in there, baby. Really cool motor. Okay, there is, there it goes. Okay. So that's, that's the, the gist of the drag that this thing has. I mean, it's only from the brushes rubbing against it. That's, that's the only drag it has. I mean, you can see it's, it spins pretty free. I mean, it's, it's not hardly affected by the, the magnet. I mean, it's not affected by the magnet whatsoever. Uh, it's only from the brushes. So... I understand it's not going to be 100% efficient, but they're able to make it so flat like this and still be a single phase DC motor, and that to me is is really cool. I mean, they squeeze the brushes in there, man, and, and how they flatten the coils like this is just, that's crazy cool. Okay, so let's, let's look at it run. Really good bearings in this thing too, by the way. This came off a motorcycle fan. So the fan on a Ninja 250, it's got one of these, and it's just crammed up in there between the little radiator inside the bike, and it had it had this little guy on it. it. Had this little guy on it, and man, this thing it moves with 12 volts. I mean, that little fan gets it. It gets it. It gets go. It goes fast. So I'm gonna leave this on here to show you, so you can tell it's spinning, even though it's gonna be more complicated. But that's fine. I'm gonna leave this on here. I'm gonna put this guy back on. I've already about destroyed this motor, but I just, I had to know what, what was going on. You know, I've never seen a single phase DC motor flat like this. I just, I mean, maybe this is old news. Maybe everybody else knows about I didn't. I mean, I've recently got more and more into motors and I love motors and I'm learning more about them every day and I'm starting to play with controllers and three phase brushless motors. I'm building things like this. And I'm getting, like, this is a brushless electric skate, I mean, a brush, brushed DC motor on my electric skateboard. But I'm working on rewinding um, AC motors and adding magnets and making brushless DC motors out of them, which is freaking cool. And, and playing with the in runners and the out runners and figuring out which ones what, and the VCR motors, which I've got a video coming up next. Um, VCRs, you can get a brushless DC motor out of them, but I only see people using... The one brushless motor that's in a VCR, but what I, I have a feeling, I'm not sure about this, but I feel like a lot of people are not knowing that there is a second brushless motor inside the VCR, which is not only bigger, but it's stronger. And it's a much better motor than the little tiny one that I see everybody using on YouTube with the, with the big, with the big, I'll show you in my next video. Just like and subscribe, check out my next video, and I'll show you. I'll take a VCR apart and I'll show you where the second motor is. It's hidden. It's hidden underneath there. But uh, I'll show you. I've got a VCR ready to take apart and that's my. I'm planning on doing that in the next video. But I'm too busy playing and experimenting to do my next videos. And that's where. I, that's why I haven't put many videos out. Because uh, I'm too busy trying to figure something else out. Anyway, so let's power this up.
Put my jibber jab in. We got a battery. So this is 12 volt battery. And we're going to not clamp this down. We really should, but we're not going to. Um, so don't try this because you could probably hurt yourself. Um, anyway. Told you so. Okay, we got one. That's a negative. Watch this. I mean, it's quiet. And this thing has got some serious torque. I mean, okay, so what I'm going to do... I mean, I don't know if you can see how fast that thing's moving. It doesn't have an RPM on it or nothing. So I don't know what the RPMs are. I have to get my tachometer. And I will get my tachometer and I will test it in just a minute. But watch. I'm going to put this up against here to try and slow it down from taking off whenever I put the power to it. Okay? So this is stupid dangerous to watch. I mean, this thing's got some power for being... Such a flat, low-profile motor, it's almost like, it acts kind of like a brushless motor. Even though it's got brushes, but it almost acts like a three-phase brushless motor. It is DC, and the output on it, which is also curious, the output is also DC. It's a brush DC motor, it puts out DC voltage. Um, but, you put more power to it, just like every other DC motor, and it goes faster. And it does. I mean, this thing gets it son and it didn't get warm or nothing i didn't do it for a very long time but i put i put uh 36 volts to it and man this thing was it was cool so i just want to show you guys that really neat motor if you've got a ninja 250 laying in your backyard like i do you have one of these if it hasn't already been parted off of there uh it's the electric fan up in front of the front radio it's the front radiator and it's got let me see if I can see the bracket. The bracket, the bracket, the bracket. There it is. This is the bracket that was on this guy. And I, I tore it all apart. I shouldn't have done that, but I had no what was going on. This is probably a $100 freaking fan. Who knows? But I thought, I took it off originally because I thought it was a brushless motor. And I'm on the hunt for brushless motors right now because I'm building some things. And I need brushless motors. This doesn't go this way. So I'm on the hunt for them, and so I've been looking in every pile of junk I got in my yard and trying to find out if they've got brushless motors in them. And the only thing that I'm finding is pretty much the stator in the motorcycle. If you didn't know that, the stator in the motorcycle is a three-phase winding coil stator, whatever. It's a three-phase, and if you were to put it in the casing and put magnets around it, it would be a badass three-phase motor which I'm going to do. I actually have two stators because I already had one and I rewound it and then I, I'm taking the one out of the Ninja I got now and I'm going to put the two together to make one big one and rewind them all in at one time and it's going to make a pretty pretty badass motor, I think. Um, but yeah, this thing acts like a three-phase brushless DC motor. It's real quiet, high RPMs, decent torque. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as torquey as this. Um, but this isn't even torquey if you don't run it right. If you try and run it the wrong way, it's, it's, it's not very powerful at all. That's why you can buy them so cheap. But if you had a, a way of running it the right way, boy, this thing is crazy insane. Um, working on that too. But anyways, hope you liked it. This is a Denso electric motor. It says on the blade here, 725. On the back here, it is a Denso... 0650000-4130 12-volt 1M1230. Check it out. I don't know if you can see that. I probably ought to check and see if you can see that. Okay, let's check and see if you can see that. You see that? Made in Japan. Really cool motor. Check it out. If you got one, go get it out. Play with it. Take it apart. Learn about it. Really neat stuff. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it makes a really good fan. Um, I don't know. I'm going to do something with it. I want to see what it will do if I put it under, you know, a load or something. I mean, that would almost be cool for, like, if I had five of these or six of these to make make a, a little, or four of them, I guess, for a little drone. You know, make a little lighter casing. 
Because the only thing is, is, is you could make a complete plastic casing for this. That's another thing. You could, I could 3D print with my 3D printer. I could 3D print a plastic case for this. And all you would need was the magnet and that itty bitty disc. That itty bitty disc. And theoretically, it should have the same amount of torque and, and same amount of everything as it does now. So then now you've got a crazy, lightweight, somewhat efficient, um, quiet, badass light motor. And uh, it would probably make a hell of a, a drone motor. Um, cause this thing, I mean, this bin's great. Uh, it handles voltage pretty good. I mean, there's gotta be, there's gotta be better versions of this somewhere is what I'm getting at. There's, there's gotta be bigger, more powerful ones in this design somewhere. And why are we not using them in more places? Um, I'm not sure about that. I don't understand. So, you know, keep that in mind too. See what you can find out. If you like this video, don't forget to like or subscribe. I've got much more coming. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get into brushless motors. I got my little wind turbine I'm building here, um, working on that. It's got neodymiums all around it, and boy, this thing here is cool. But saving that for another video, don't want to cram it all in one video. Um, but yeah, don't forget, if you like, subscribe, appreciate it. I'll check out your channel. I'll like your stuff. I'll subscribe to your channel. Uh, thank you a lot for watching. Take it easy. Hey, I'm Scatterbrain. So uh, I told you I was going to show you this running this motor so i'm gonna do that now so i'm gonna put you guys back up here i think it's gonna work out as a good spot for my camera for a few things all right focus focus okay anyways watch this well not this this can you see that forward Backward, forward, backward. That's this one running that one. So, regardless, I don't know what the theory is about what motor can run what motor, but this motor's running that motor. So now we're going to see... I'm going to prop this right here or something. Okay, so now... The output is pretty cool. Um, I'll show you the output right now just to reiterate um, what we got going on here. So, there we go. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but that is 34 volts. 34 volts. I don't know if you can see that or not. Really lightweight little motor. I can make it even lighter. Okay, now we're getting some more. We're going to need to put a clip on my other thing, but I haven't yet. There we go. Ta-da! Okay. You ready? Pretty good output. So that kind of tells me, I know it says 12 volt on it, but from experience, basically the, when you run it at the correct RPMs, 
the output of the motor is usually typically close to what the, the, the motor is supposed to be ran off of when you run it to the RPMs it's rated for. Um, this thing spins much faster than what my drill will spin at, at 12 volts, but yet it's putting out 30 volts. So it's, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because um, if you run this to the right RPMs that it's rated for, or that, it's, that, it, that it claims that it is, it puts out like 12 volts, like, like what, it, what it's rated for. But this one, you spin it less than what it actually spins on 12 volts, and it puts out 30 volts. So I, I'm a little confused what that means, but it, to me, that's, that's strange. And, but here's another thing. My meter, I don't know if you can see this, but it is set on 20 volts DC, 20 volts. But yet, any other time I get to 20 volts measuring any kind of voltage of anything, it goes out to one and you have to set it to the next setting which is 200 and then it'll read it and it'll tell you what it is but not with this motor with this motor my voltmeter is going all the way up to 30 something volts and it, and it registers it reads it perfectly i don't i don't understand that but it doesn't you know i don't know how to explain it but it it like it says no whenever you put too much voltage to it it says that eh, you gotta go to the next setting so you go to the next setting but with this motor, you just saw it was it was registering 30-something volts and doesn't even care. Why? Why is it doing that? Like that doesn't even make sense. Any other time I put 20... I mean, you put 20.1 volts to this thing, and it, it goes out to 1, and it won't read anymore when it's on this setting. But why is it with this motor... It's reading, I mean, look how easy that thing puts it out. I mean, it literally, with just with that little blade on there, giving it the, you know, the, the flywheel effect. I mean, this thing spins freaking free. So, you can imagine if this thing was on the front of a motorcycle, and you're driving down the road, and, and the wind goes through it. I mean, this thing's going to spin crazy fast, and the output on it would almost charge your dang battery on your motorcycle. It, you could almost use it as your own. Like, if you had another one on there, you wouldn't even need a stator. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, the amperage isn't high. But, I mean, it's a very interesting motor. So, I just wanted to add this to it. Um, I told you I was going to do it, and I, I didn't. So, here it is. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like. Thank you. Take it easy.